Here's the original that has had nothing done to it. Nothing. I'm showing you the original thing that he handed me. Okay, now let's talk for a minute. Now just pretend it's you. Me? It's you. Me? And some person, doesn't matter who, whatever, you picked the circumstance, handed you a piece of wood. And it had a pretty good likeness of you on it. Because he was an artist. He said wood, Robin. Not paper. Oh wait, paper comes from wood. Wooden trees. And and it had a pretty good likeness of you on it. Thing that he handed me. Okay, now let's <clears throat> talk for a minute. Now just pretend it's you. It's you. And some person, doesn't matter who, whatever, you picked the circumstance, handed you a piece of wood. And it had a pretty good likeness of you on it. Because he was an artist. And you could not tell that there was a dead sheep on your head. You had no idea there was a goat on your head. You certainly had no idea that when you turned it upside down, one of the drops of blood that he put dripping off your fang uh, was an eye of a serpent. You never, never even think that the negative imagery, the space between the actual primary object and the other space, was actually meant to be an image in of itself. Thing. That's pretty wild. And the blood droplets. It's pretty crazy that someone would use the negative space, like the space between my arm and this wall, to create an actual image that was part of what he was trying to do. That's pretty heavy. Anyway, so pretend it's you. Okay, well, this was handed to me in 2001. He made me with fangs on because... Uh, that's where I had vampire sunglasses. He put sunglasses on me. Uh, and then he put an earring on me because I wore earrings. He used the knot in the wood. That's a knot in the wood. He used that to make the, the eye of the sheep and then the liquid coming out of the eye. Now, here's one thing that's really fascinating. As we go into this discovery and understanding, they, they almost always put a teardrop coming out of the eye of the sheep. It's even on the altar in the Vatican. A teardrop. Because when an animal dies, a, a, a drop or a liquid comes out of the eye. It's not It's not an uncommon thing. Uh, I've seen it. Anyway, so he used the knot in the wood in order to put the eye and make the liquid, the, the liquid coming out of the eye of the sheep because the sheep is dead. And he made... Uh, the nose of the sheep and he made the tongue of the sheep see and then right here you can you can see how obvious look at this pencil mark right here look at that look at this pencil mark right here look at the triangle pencil mark look at this look how direct this triangle is then look right here look at this look at this and as you look at it and you follow my cursor and you see this line here there's this line here and here look at the horn Look at the sh look at the sharpness in here. And look at the ear right here, and then look at the way he made my hair on my head. Look, look at every single line. Be very observant. Look at my sideburn. Look at the hoof. See the hoof? That's a hoof. Look, look at the line. It's hard to do it. It's like backwards. See the, see the hoof. I'm having trouble. Okay, so. Now that I've shown you, there's something very peculiar going on. Very, very strange. And he put a dead sheep and a goat. And they're, they're in See opposite. You See the closed That's eyes. Look. Look at the line. See it? See the hoof. Okay, so now that I've shown closed you, eyes. there's something very peculiar going on. Very, very strange. See the fangs. And he put a dead sheep and a goat, and they're they're in opposite directions. Well, that's fascinating because you the book the of fang. Jude says an angel that kept not their first estate, abandoned their or left their own habitation. He has kept in everlasting chains. The word everlasting is you see the wounded head and backwards, and the word chains is ligaments of the body, shackle of the prisoner. So your ligaments are your shackles. Your body are those chains. 
because you're an angel. And to be an angel actually trapped in a host body, you're in chains. <clears throat> okay, so anyway, so there is an image and that image means nothing unless you have the key. So let's let's take another look. There it is drawn in, okay? There's the sheep right there. There's a dead sheep. What's up? There's a goat. Now look how he signed his name. He's saying he signed Marcel and he he made his signature part of the face. This is the face of like a Mayan Indian. It's a profile. There's the chin, there's the mouth, top lip, nose, eye. And then he made one of these. I've seen these type like hats in Mayan tribes or Aztecs. It's got this front pointy thing and on the back as well. And look, he did the Adidas logo. One, two, three, the Adidas logo, three pyramids. That's crazy. And you can see he dated it 2001. I mean, l l let's just talk for a second. How insane. This is a copy of what I sent to Clark. I don't even know what date it is because the date disappeared. But it, it's really hard to show you with upside down and backwards, but when you flip it that way, you see the devil with the horns coming up, and then you see how he has a little horn speaking great things. And it it looks more like an alien. See the neck, and then the chin, and then the the eyes, the wounded head. It did live the sideburn, neck, alien neck. And in this direction, it's the serpent eating Johnny, and <clears throat> as a as a dead sheep, it has the the teardrop coming out, and the the fang of the serpent. You see the, the, the neck gear and the the blood droppings. From the neck gear. You see the fangs and the blood dropping. The Adidas, the three. Three lines in the, up at the hat. Because he did it his way. dead sheep what's up there's a goat now look how he signed his name he's saying he signed marcel the kingdom of god isn't it how insane yeah, right. i mean that's insane at first i didn't see it i wasn't saved the bible says unless you're born again you cannot see the kingdom of god isn't it strange when i got saved in 2002 when I saw that thing, I'm like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> it's like, what? I mean, you know, it took being saved to be able to see that. When he gave it to me, I couldn't see anything, which proves I was a slave to his serpent race because I couldn't see. That's why Jesus said, I've come to give sight to the blind. October 27th. It wasn't just guys walking around with sticks, feeling their way around. It was, we're all spiritually blind. That's why Jesus' mission was to restore the sight to the blind. Um, so then when you turn it over, the negative space, but you'll have to look at it before I turn it over. You see these drops of blood dripping off my fangs? He did those very intentionally. And then I saw right here, I saw, wow, he's really making a hard line here and he's going for this to be together. And then as I looked at the directional of the pen, I was like, good God, he made a serpent with its mouth open and its tail wrapped around my neck as the collar eating me. And then as I drew it in, I'm like, okay, that's freaking insane. 
So there's a dead sheep on top of my head and a goat and a serpent eating me. Okay, that's just one picture. Okay, now let me let me explain something to you. What does that mean? I mean, tell me what that means. What does that have to do with anything? How maybe it's some freaking serial killer weirdo. It actually is a serial killer, by the way. Uh -oh. it, that's that's a drawing of a serial killer. That's what it is. But but what do you do with it? How do you quantify it? How do you qualify it? What do you do? I mean, you say, well, this is from a very unusual sect of <laughs> ninja sheep killers from the Orient. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, what the hell? That's why I wanted answers. I was going to get some answers. And he was not there. Um, so then... Well, you want to know why I drew it? Because I knew it would make you laugh when you seen it. And I was basically just, I drew it because it looks like, it looks like uh, the, the Philadelphia Art Museum. And it looks, it looks like you being eaten by a serpent. Blinking your eye. That's what it looks like. Because when you take the serpent, if you use this as the mouth, and and then this as the fang right here. But this way, you have the you have the sheep looking like back that way, like. And then, but if you turn it around this way, you got yourself a like a bull horn. here and either way it's from east to west from east to west I don't know what that drawing is so that's why I did it and there's really no other reason besides what I see so I sent it to you now here's the question When I, when I did it right side up and upside down, did I even know what I was doing? Or did it just happen to be, I was drawing it this way, and then all of a sudden, you get the devil with the horns on his head and, the, and then the little horn in the middle, and then the wounded head, the beast with a wounded head and did live as an alien also because it is an alien face and the, the sideburn but also the teardrop as a dead sheep I'm not hearing. <clears throat> so that's the question. My wife, after a very uncomfortable moment, um, we had, had she had started behaving very strangely. Let mm, me find out. Tina was your wife. Getting into all the details. Uh, because they're personal, uh, she came home one day and she came up to me and she put her arms on my on my shoulders right here like she was going to just come up and grab you and give you a kiss type thing. And so she came up like this and she's like, I love you, I'm so in love you. And she grabbed my collar and she swung me around and went. See, when Clark says things like, my wife said, I love you, I'm so in love you. 
that could have just been the actions, but not the actual words that came out of her mouth. Bam! And slammed me against the wall. Like... Like pushed you up against boom, the wall. Boom! And I was like, whoa! Yep. And then she starts pawing at me. And she said, but I want you to worship me. Worship me. So as someone's actions show that that's what it is, but the words didn't actually come out of the person's mouth. But I experienced something like that while I was married, and I wasn't interested whatsoever. And, and I think it was a way of possibly ruining the marriage, but it didn't. Because all it did was it showed that my wife had forgiveness and still would talk to her even after that. And then all of a sudden uh, we get a phone call saying that she's not alive anymore. A little bit of time afterwards. But the way things are in this world, who really even knows? It's a similar situation, like when it reminds me of that story about Joseph when Pharaoh's wife lunged herself at Joseph and and then he's like, like come on, I, I, no. And um and then I think she what did she do? She took a piece of his garment and then told Pharaoh and then ever and then Joseph got locked up. You know, put in prison. They put the they put the crown of thorn around his head, trying to put him in prison, and they gang stalked him severely even more. Like that kind of thing. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, me too. Okay. okay, I don't know if you have or not, but if you don't have your map legend, you don't understand it. Uh, different situations <laughs> on Outward Bound. I went on Outward Bound when I was younger, and in the mountains you have contour maps, and you have a legend, and you have to triangulate your position off mountain peaks and whatever Try else you can find in order to find out where you are on that map. And according to <clears throat> your ability to understand what your location is in the woods, uh, I mean, way af away from civilization, mm -hmm. if you're not able to correctly read that map and know where you are, you may not make it because you may not be able to walk to a source of water that's close enough or you may not be able to get to where you need to be to resupply for food before you've run out of food and then you become too weak to make it any further there's a lot of variables and what helps you do all that is the legend on the map down in the right hand or the left hand corner they'll have depending on how you look at it left hand corner right hand corner all the way down to this end and in order to get to a place where you have where you have water quickly at the moment water sprouts up from here and water sprouts up from this area right here which is even closer so if, let's say you lived here In this dragon and say you live in the dragon with the eyes here and the nose with the crown and the teeth if you lived here you can quickly just run out and grab some water and then go back in like that or even over here but <clears throat> if you're down here there's no water sprouting up anywhere, even though she's taking a, a sip or whoever that is with a, a cup taking a sip from the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. There's, there's no actual, 
it, it's kind of like being in the desert. The desert is deserted. There's no, there's no water there. There's no life. It's, it's deserted. So you have to find where water would be coming up for you. Water, water works history park. Nothing up there, but down here is there even closer. But I don't know what it's going to be like in the winter. And then even here, you have water sprouting up. So even if you're over here in this area, you just have to go barely a few feet. And same thing if if you were like numero uno, number one. If you were the number one boss. Or you have this this rainbow. You don't have to go far either, just to get water. Like it, let's just say that there's no other way of getting anything but for some reason the water just stays on a series of icons that show you distances and and different things you'll need to know um, on that particular map in order to interpret where you are so you have to have the map legend okay let me show you real quick okay so let me read to you in other words you got to know where you're at on the map you got to know who's where and why but a dragon being over here It's also it's also uh, an opening and if you turn it the other way but flip it but then you get yourself a, a green new deal. If nobody could see that until I showed you that and you just turn it the other way, then now you see it. But with the woman being the dragon in this script, then the dragon would be here. And down here is the well, let's say natural woman. The natural woman, and then the the male, which can do one or the other, and it's twin twin X female system. Because either way, that's what it is. And then from the outside, but on the inside. There's two options. So being down here the entire time, I mean, it, it's a serpent. Johnny's already getting eaten. So that's, that's kind of, it kind of doesn't seem good to start with. And there's no water sprouting up anywhere. There's no water here. If there was, you would be more enticed to go in that direction. So if this is not a smart move to go down here in an apocalyptic situation, because there's no water anywhere, there's no free water sprouting up. And, but down here there is, right in the dead center. Why, why is it in the dead center? 
Well, because there's three sea creatures, this is a male, and this is a female and a female. But what if these two females are only females on the outside? They're really men. They're really men. But they put on a suit like a woman. They become they become a like you can put on a rubber female suit or you actually change completely fully into a woman and then the male was a wheat that had gotten sewed with a tear because it was the it was the combination of the wheat getting like basically lured into it you get lured into it and then the males i mean the females look like men for real on the outside too because they had they had a uh, sewed on them with the tear and then that's why there's a mixture of the animals the mixing of the dna So that's one way of seeing it is because this is a male and these are two females, but knowing that it's a two double X female system, you got to use this. It's your own. Like basically it's like, that's your own and you're, you're just rearranging your own down here with the dragon dragon has has it sewed on and you know, yeah I guess it can come from an animal or a donor I mean if you're a donor when you die are you donating your organs and, and whatever so what are they going to do with your with whatever it is that you have I, you know I don't know but they could do that and then, because it's Sister City's part, that could mean literal, literally like a, a sister born a woman. But that's only if Uranus is a planet. Oh, yeah, I see, I see what Jacob Israel was talking about. He was talking about me they're talking about me but this as a woman like that you gotta watch out She's not just a, a regular singer. I believe that that is a professional singer. As you can see right over here, you have a variety of symbols right here. And to know and understand what these symbols are. To well, you have the pyramids. You got a couple of those. You got three, four, you have a square. As in, you have a square. Square is like SpongeBob square pants with his party favor blown out of his mouth. Square pyramid. If you go up a little bit, you have a pyramid that way. This would be the correct way of looking at it because it's it should be Christ on the bottom and then holding everything up top. And then this is the selfish pyramid. 
where the person's being held up top and he's just letting everybody else hold him up instead of holding others up. And then you have the, the Benzwanger Pyramid Triangle right here, which was altered. That was altered. The, the only one that seems natural is this one right here. Because this one seems altered some way in the middle. As if something project projects outward. And to know and understand what these symbols are determines your ability to find your way <laughs> out of the woods. I mean, I've been hmm. way, yeah. way back in the woods. Like back uh, it was survival, and if you don't do it right, you could have serious, serious problems. So right here is a table that shows you different icons that are used in the legend. Now, let's just How read the, the definition real quick. A map area and a short description of what the symbol means. For example, you know a short segment of a blue sinuous line may be labeled rivers. Because map rivers symbols and towns. meanings vary from region to region, on a clear and concise legend, it is critical for conveying the distinctive characteristics of the map. The rivers There may be three actual rivers underneath that flow through. It may be different type of water. I, I don't know. But I wonder if if this set of water goes straight through here and then like branches off and goes there and there and there. And then this set of water flowing underneath is what sprouts up out of this hole, out of that hole. Maybe this one, maybe that one. Maybe, it might alter, take the other side. Like if this one took the X completely, and then in between, then this one would take just this and go straight. And then, and then the next one would take other X and go straight through like that something like that but I wonder if there's three rivers running underneath and they're all different types of water like one's pulling spring water and then the other one is you know like the fancy the other fancy water so anyway so this is George's testimony uh, and I hear he's still good. Last I heard about it, he was doing just fine. And then Kim, uh, uh, Alexi, uh, this is what Kitta means, okay? The next one is Dodanim, so and Dodanim in verse 4. Dodanim, the word is supposedly a slip of the pen in the King James Bible. That's what I heard about it, he was doing just fine. And then Kim, uh, and he, was, <laughs> he had this wild... Eyes wide open, like it was super awesome. Anyway, he uh, he he was sitting there with his eyes just looking at me, and I'm like, and tears are just rolling out of my eyes because it just socked me so hard. And so I I just I say what I what I feel how things are, and because I always get this sense between. These, this communication of threats and this is how it's going to be. It's going to get socked so hard, bro. And so it's just, I mean, when I, but I saved him from his ant problem. And, and then a, a different 
spirit comes out of the same look, the same looking person, a different spirit. And there's always these twin switches happening. And that's why I've gotten different views, I think, of different personalities, even though I'm watching the same channel. And so when I look at him and he's got his eyes just wide open and I'm like looking at him and he's like, oh, it didn't happen. I didn't pass out. He always passed out. If he felt the ants, that's it. He's going down. So that was the, that was our little trigger. Johnny and feel the ants. That was trigger sign. So anyway, so and, um, yeah. So you see ants over there and you go, you got some ants over there. And I go, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm going to take care of them. So I pull this out. George. And you go. <gasps> Is this the George story? Do that right now. Yeah, okay, that's what you do when you're at my house. Because you don't want me to kill him. So you go over to the ants and you do this. You bend down and you go. Run away, little ants. So, the bad man is going to Anyway, spring. that whole go thing's on there. I could just keep going, but I'll let you watch it. So, anyway, hey, dog. And I was... <laughs> Let me hear where I turned began. around. And that's the miracle. That's where the miracle happened. So, I got out my cell phone and I documented it in the time. 521. So, anyway, it's one testimony. Here's George's testimony. A uh, quick story about George. Uh, George, he had some... I forget what the condition is called, but he would... Feel, it felt like he had ants on his head and his fingers they go, would go, lock go. up it was Question. super crazy they would, would just that go, help and they it looked all deformed all, too so his fingers you, would start looking off and they are them and, be like, yeah. and they you don't and then speak from ant, there he, man he would hit English. the dirt and so but it really okay now it's going to look ridiculous here, but let's life. just say he never knew let's when say it was going to happen shrink down to become an ant. It, it just came out of left field he level. couldn't hold it so now you're not only their size you speak ant Anyway, what a horrible affliction. I don't even know what that sounds like. Affliction. But uh, you, you anyway, do um, that. I was so praying. You, at their what? level, can warn them, knowing what you know, because you also have you know, human nature I'm somehow. In, in, you can warn uh, them of what is coming. Anyway, so, um, the yeah, spray is coming. A day happened where so you can warn them to we're flee. coming or, down or my street. Or better yet, while you warn them to flee, because here he I am, I'm going to do this. I'm going to spray it at them. And you're going to stand in the line of the spray. What I would do is, when I saw it coming, I would grab him and take care of him. I would sit him down somewhere. And I would sit there with him because I knew he was going to hit pass out. Then I'd hold him until his body, his brain would like reset kind of. You would be the And sometimes it wouldn't just happen. It had between go over God uh, between and over skip again. And God, I mean, skip I was, God, God right? skip God. Thing. So, what Jesus anyway, did, so said on the way God, home, but he came George down to had our an episode and he and stood. We were pulling right in the driveway, in the, and he was just telling me the stream of that God's moment, wrath like, on the cross having, to absorb the ants. He always used all, to say the ants because it felt like he had ants on his head. Fully God, fully and man. so anyway, so when we pulled he in the driveway, he, I, he was just about street. to go into it, it's and his action I, I reached over to kind of hold him so he didn't lurch Christ. forward, and I that pulled in the driveway, and I stopped, Christ, and then the comma after my whole name, body just lit to something else, or uh, a dash after I mean, his I was just, just whoa, for my whole body. We preach Christ, period, because there is nothing else. Doing it right now. <laughs> That's so weird. While I'm talking about it right now, my whole body's just starting to sink. So is that the electromagnetic pulse? Pulse, uh, bio weapon, invisible weapon. Anyway, so then I I heard the Lord say, "Lay hands on George," and so I did. I laid hands on him, <clears throat> and man, it felt like somebody just. Hammered me. Hmm. And back in the seat after I laid hands on him, I hmm. felt this energy just going through my arms and just, and it went into him. But when it went out of me, it's like I just, I got just pounded. Hmm. And it, 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 it had such an effect on me that I was sitting in my seat in the vehicle and I, I couldn't even lean my head forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was like almost like knocked out and I was sitting there and I had to look over like this and with my head against the seat and I looked over at him and as soon as I looked over at him, he was, 
His face was like right here, and he was. <laughs> so I was just happy because he was he pounded your face into. You're basically not like knocked out. I mean, not you per se, but whoever you're subliminally sending that message to is is what's just going to happen to that person when they try to lay hands on somebody because the reality is when you're trying to heal someone from the demons that they have inside of them their demons come out and they want to sock you for helping them even though they don't understand at the time and but the best part is when they do get converted and after they're done being mad at you they realize they're only fighting themselves because they can't control their own emotions and you're allowing somebody else to run you so that's all that means if you can keep your anger to yourself and just understand that your your enemy inside of you speaks for you if everybody can just be themselves just themselves be yourself if you can tell the truth and you don't have to worry about an oath that you took swearing to secrecy you want to tell the truth but you can't because you know what that's going to do so you have to continue on and and take it to the very end and then everybody picks satan as jesus and then because the actual the actual spirit of christ it's in the world it runs through people's veins it runs through their blood and because that's the life force that's inside of that spirit literal interpretation people want to drink that blood people want to eat the flesh because christ said eat my flesh as he was talking to his disciples so think about that he was talking to his disciples when he said that did his disciples eat his flesh no not literally but they ate the flesh they ate the bread they drank the wine sometimes when christ is saying something in the bible in the red letters you'll see that he was talking to his disciples he wasn't talking to other people he was talking to his disciples saying eat my flesh drink my blood obviously they didn't drink his blood or eat his flesh while he was talking to them so because he was talking to them just like when he was talking to his disciples in the beginning and they asked him like what will be the end what will be the end of the end of the world see that no man deceives you if they say he's over here if he's in the desert don't believe it if he's in a secret chamber don't go there because he was talking to his disciples for them to watch out for that because he was already there for them so let's say christ was really in the desert and but scripture says no no he if they say he's in a desert believe it not well to who who who's supposed to believe that his disciples that he was talking to because they're the ones that asked him the question so it's like if you're being recorded there's a conversation going on they record you and you're talking and they ask you a question and you give them an answer who are you talking to at that time are you talking to the one asking you the question or are you talking to the entire planet are you talking to the person you're talking to or are you speaking directly to the entire planet when your disciples at one of your disciples asked you a question well Christ gave him the answer and he told them if they say like here's here's the here's the proof if they say that I'm in the desert don't believe it so even if you're there you now know not to believe anybody else that says it and then over time i believe what happened is the disciples got to know and trust in what he was saying and understand a little better and he's telling them what to look out for he's not telling the entire planet that don't go in the desert 
Because what if he's actually there in the desert and everybody that's there is like, no, we know he's not in the desert. Scripture says that. But we know that why we're really going. We know like why we're really getting deep. <laughs> oh my God. We know why we're really going. And, but, So his disciples knew that if they said if any of the if any of the Christ say that they're there, or they say they're in the secret chambers, and you know what the secret chamber is. He's not he's not there. Like yeah, you'll hear about a Jesus here and there and everywhere. Because that was the signs that he told you to look out for. Watch out. You're going to hear about him being there. And But what is a desert anyway? A desert is really something that... But if Christ isn't in the desert, and he's over there in the water, or being baptized by John in the water... Before he was announced, if he was walking on the water, then you can say that that's life. The water, the gospel, what what he delivered was was the free flowing, clear water of life. But in the desert, there's it represents dry, like no water. No life. It's harder to get trees to grow, I, I guess. Vegetation and, and whatnot. So it just seems like a dry place, which would mean Christ wouldn't be in an area where there's no life and there's no water because that spirit is the water. Therefore, he wouldn't be in the desert in that way either. He had this wild eyes wide open like it was super oh like eyes were like so beat the piss out like like that super awesome anyway he uh he, he was sitting there with his eyes just looking at me and i'm like and tears are just rolling out of my eyes because it just socked me so hard and mm -hmm. and so when i look at him and he's got his eyes just wide open and I'm like looking at him, and he's like, oh, it didn't happen, I didn't pass out. He always passed out. If he felt the ants, that's it. There is no he's one going else. Down. There's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So that's, that's the first aspect to this peace treaty, the mediator. So aspects are, like, you know how you have specs to measure Tape measure aspects. What if this was really what they're talking about? Like, what if this is actually what they were actually talking about? And I never talked talk to them. I never directly did anyway. Not yet, anyway. I haven't talked to Skip. Johnny. And what if he's talking about the ants? And the ants is the story that's relating over to Skip. Because after all, after all, uh, Skip, it looks like Skip's here. It looks like he's right there. His eye, mouth. He did say he was going to Spray him with a smile. The ants down here. So, if that would be him up there, and he's even above Johnny here, then that could represent the script of the one that was in charge of destroying the wise men with Daniel 
and his and his buddies and all the wise men in the land and he's going to spray them and you got to warn them for him you got to warn them for warn them to warn you guys that live down here does anybody live down here in this area this major city of the masonic temple one north broad street and then this tower as if that's what comes out of the the opening possibly could represent the 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 actual female but then having the the addition but it looks like it's going all the way down and then this RFID chip being the last shot the mask Jim Carrey because it is a mass mask system in that in that uh showing you that and because this is a race it, it's the the lucifer the lucifer race up 17th street liberty one liberty two liberty two crossover liberty one male and female system again Go right over to 222, Third Temple, 666, the dragon. Now that I see the dragon, on 18th Street, right there where that is why. Jacob Israel drinks that cup all the time. And then but at the same time that it's like that scorpion tail type thing that comes up. Just like the That's pretty cool how it shows it underneath of it. Like the head that statue down down the road there. That was the that was our little trigger, Johnny. I feel the ants. That was trigger sign. So, anyway, so yeah, so anyway, that whole thing's on there. I could just keep going, but I'll let you watch it. So anyway, so this is George's testimony, uh, and I hear he's still Peter good. And Paul Last I heard very, about very it, he was Second doing just fine. Is the method and then of peace. Kim, uh, uh, How Alexi. How that piece achieved? Uh, this is a little well, girl notice that a couple was in things Grand Junction, in verse her grandmother, and on down to verse All right. kept trying to push So that's what Kitta means, okay? I had an even long way to the Grand Junction event. A lot of people kept trying to push yeah, me into laying hands on California's a long way her. from... I hadn't even met her yet, early. but a lot of people were trying to shove me into it, and that's not the way it works. That's why sometimes people want me to lay hands on them, and I, I, don't, I, would, I would go lay hands on everybody that asked if it were up to me. I would instantly just say, "Okay, yeah." I'm <laughs> it's, it's I would if if I would lay hands on anybody. If it was up to me, I would just man. When I see Robin in the picture that he drew of me, trying to make me laugh, don't make me laugh. I'm going. I know that's what I would do if it were up to me, but that's not the way it works. Never. I never get a uh, really a say in it. I was super surprised that he he did George actually. Anyway, so long story short, uh, they showed up in Grand Junction on Earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of His cross. Again, blood, the life force, the the life that was in the blood of that cross, His cross, the one that He picked up. And he walked, and this is representing Christ on the cross with the twins on one on each side. Uh, I think Decimus and the other one. So the devil superimposed on the face of the sheep, right there. I hear so that. right here, the devil. 
It's like an owl. Buzzing sound. See that? Eye, eye, mouth, horns, wings like an owl. So see, either you believe what I'm showing you is correct, and you can see that, my God, this guy, Jonathan, he, my God, this guy, Jonathan, he is showing us oh my God. some of the craziest Jonathan. stuff you've ever seen. This is insane. And it's the same, okay? So that's why I'm talking about the legend to the map. How do you understand any of this? How could you possibly know what's going on in the world? How could you possibly know what's going on in your own life if you don't know that you're being hunted? Your soul is being hunted in a beast system. I couldn't tell. It's the woman that rides the beast. The female mother goddess that... In so the actual woman is what he's saying. The actual woman that rides the beast. So this is the beast. The, the what, what comes out of here is a beast, and it's like you're riding it. Just like a statue with the bird coming out. It almost seemed like the... The guy with the scorpion tail, that he was riding it. Wouldn't that be insane if something like that happens and you can actually ride yourself on a like a propeller as as an as a alien mixed. Or it could be a full blown alien that has just like a mechanism that comes out and then all of a sudden it has some way of flying it. Energy. And she rides the beast system, which is every human being. That's the all-seeing eye. It's Mystery Babylon. See, a lot of people say they know what it is, but they don't know. They don't know. Oh, yeah. I, I think you're talking about the eye. When you pluck your eye out, because the Bible says, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. If your arm causes it, cut it off. If you look at the word cut off, cut off means like to stop, to turn, to, to turn in a different direction. You're getting cut off. So you gotta, you gotta go over here. There's a wall in front of you. You get, if somebody cuts you off with a car in front of you, you have to alter your movement and do something else. You don't have to actually cut your arm off at all. You don't actually have to pluck your eye out. You just stop you just stop doing that. Cut it out. Cut it off, cut it out. They took it as literal, cut it out, pluck it out, pop it off. And and then you can see the kingdom of heaven inside of you when it's a host body system because that eye is able to see it's like a Milky Way. It looks like outer space. It's inner space. But it looks like outer space. And it's like stars, shooting stars flying. I would just assume if there was a fishbowl inside and the host body system is this like self, uh, the, uh, the dead sheep, the dead sheep system is down in this direction here. This is the dead sheep system because the sheep is dead. It's not going to produce actual life, but it will produce food for the other race. But then down here is the female, the female, even though that's a male, but I think that's the female. Originally, and then even though these are two females, I think they're the males originally, this one and that one. And so it represents the two that are down there. And then the actual female dragon in this direction. Because the dragon gives his power to the beast. Well, the dragon being 222, knowing that. This building here, it's up to 18 floors. I've seen it today. And that building is called the cathedral. 
and then Gematria 222 two is the actual name itself. So it even says I'm a dragon. It's kind of it, it's kind of click cut and dry. I'm a dragon, hidden codes. Sophia, like AI, Hitler as well, because it's just the same thing. And so that you're told that that's where the bride of Christ is. And then you get to the cathedral, and that's the actual name of the building being built on the 222 parking lot in between 17th and 18th Street, 18th and Race, because that's the race. This is all I'm learning about this map and who, like, who's here. All right, it kind of makes sense, sister. The, the legitimate sister would live here as the dragon, but the, but the beast rides, or the, the, the woman rides the beast system. The dragon gives, gives the power over to the beast, but the beast has a wounded head and does live. Whoever that beast is, the one that rose up from the sea, has a wounded head. Whoever it is, whoever was played to pick that role at this exact moment has a wounded head and and did live. I'm going to be honest. I had no idea what was what flipping it upside down. I didn't even think about flipping this upside down. Because I know Johnny's wondering, like, what the hell, how are you an artist like me? You don't even, how did you do that? It's not really that great of artwork. It was a fast sketch. And I did it with pen too, so there's no, there's no altering it and there's no changing it. But I honestly didn't know, Johnny. I didn't know that the fang and the, and the, and the blood and, and then the, the knot and the wood and, and the, Teardrop from the eye, dead sheep on the forehead. Also, you see the key. The key on the forehead. I would like to take credit for it because I think it's like if you if you take credit for it, then they may think highly of you. But no, I just drew it this way, and however that looked is how it looked on the other side. And I guess that's what it was supposed to look like on the other side, because I'm just, it's like I'm tracing it, so that's why it looks that way. But it's also similar to the other drawings, you know, from those serial killers. And that sounds like a threat where that's what I would get locked up for, is there's a twin, this, this rubber suit thing that how, how are you gonna like how are you gonna it's not like I'm giving people ideas because when I say these things it's because it was already thought of it was already it was already either planned out thought of and or canceled or all the all of the above and then it got canceled but things can only get canceled if you if you know what they are like the the plan the plan fails the plan gets murdered because it 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 gets it gets stomped like the plan gets stomped so anybody that has a plan and it doesn't work and it gets stomped that plan died that plan got murdered that plan lost if it was a football game that the other team won you can say oh man they got killed you see the eagles game hey, they got murdered today by the cowboys i don't know but they really didn't. So, and I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure everybody knew the, the main, 
the main interpretation of things, but tried to take it literally. So here's a here's a pyramid shape, or something's protruding out of it too. So it's all tied tied together here with with, with the dragon. And the actual name of it and the I am a dragon. Roger that. If you don't know and you didn't start with this to get started, you didn't even get started with the right foundation because this Oh, so if you didn't even start down here. I've got to tell you, I have ignored this for the most part, starting down here. The beginning because it is the beginning it's it's one i mean it, this is even more of a beginning one right here and then one and 54 return of the jedi and then this being ground zero because ultimately if this is one and there's even if it's two over here it's still ground zero so if you start up Then you're starting down here in the where it's like the the love connection and this is also where if you're down here on love park and you look up it looks like the oh it looks like the tower in petco 2 where the woman's looking out because there's a heart up here on this side and when she's looking out she could be looking at Love Park. Because this city does represent three different rivers of water, three different ide ideologies, or however we say that word, three different belief systems. Well, this, this, this belief here, they, they believe in inverting inverting up and lifting everything up inside of the actual body itself well no well this one believes in in the outward motion going out but still being up inside but if this one believes in in that it means women and and men women and men combined together the virgin because it's it's all it's all a new birth it's everything everyone is a virgin because they're born again with a different way of what their tree of life is so there would be three different types of belief systems and then then the spirit of christ would be the fourth because there's the actual real meaning of being born again truly is in your spirit but if you don't know the holy spirit if you don't if you don't know that feeling and you don't experience it then you're not you're not going to know what that fourth like kingdom is of a belief system while there's 12 trees but now that one got cut down and like Nebuchadnezzar, he was a tree that got cut down. There is a tomb here. It's only one. It's like the Gallagher tomb in this section. And yet, down here is showing you beyond the Jordan. Because the Jordan is right here. And John was baptizing... I believe he was baptizing at the Jordan River. But Bethany is beyond the Jordan River. And there's all types of things that just... Someone's getting eaten by a serpent. This one's getting stung, poked in the face by a, some pointy object here. And there's blood trickling down. And, and it just doesn't seem pleasant. It just doesn't look like anybody's awake. There's no life because it... There's no fountains of water sprouting up anywhere. 
except for this one that's still sleeping, like walking with the cup, drinking wine, and maybe peeing it out. Or is that a gun? Is that a is that a gun? Like the barrel, but it's it's like cocked down as if it was broken or something. But either way, the the life this is it's a you got a dead sheep right here. Coming out of there. And so the mouth, like if this was the mouth of the serpent, and there's the actual altar where the top of the sun is. And these are angels melting, melting down. Then everything up in this direction seems dangerous it seems lifeless and you won't be able to survive in the woods up in this wilderness and it's right next to the Skoo Kill River so everything about this section has death destruction and Unless you drink the water that's coming straight through there. I don't know how tasty that is. But heading down here more. It just seems like there's... There, you got the Garden of Eden. Which is in a dead center. In the midst of the garden. These 12 trees. Lucifer was... He, he had fell in. He, uh, he, he had fell in. He fell down. To do it better than the Spirit of God in heaven. So everybody has their opportunity to do it better than God. And when everybody realizes that God is a spirit, and it's and in heaven is just a spiritual place. So if they took Christ up to a high mountain, like as if somehow you just all of a sudden go like this in a moment and you're looking down at earth like wow that's what earth that's what earth looks like there you go you know how there's the one side over here on this side and then there's another side over here well imagine each side where the where that football area looks is glass and that entire spot that's glass has water system the, the the holograms everything making the entire sky and all that stuff and the weather and you're looking down and and Satan's like I can give it all to you Jesus if you're Jesus, then jump off. Your angels will catch you uh, before you, you know, fall and smash your, and just uh, completely crush yourself to death as this thing is waiting for you with its mouth wide open and its tongue sticking out, its eyeball over here looking to devour you as soon as you jump. And again, they'll, they'll catch you. See that whale? Yeah, go ahead. Right, just jump, Jesus. They'll jump right into the mouth of that whale and so it's all yours all you got to do is bow down just worship me just bow down and worship and so that's why it's Satan's world because Jesus he was tempted for those 40 days it was a testing period and when Satan was testing him for all that time, he said, you can keep it. I don't want it because he's not bound down. And what the hell happened? Uh-oh. And then look, that's what you're going to see. Wow, I didn't even know that. How that? 
Oh, that's cool. So now you're looking at it. And so as you're, okay, I see. So anybody that's up in heaven and they're, they're being tempted, like they're the Jesus, they're being taken up, they're being tempted. And then they're like, Like, no, I, because you're not, you're not living in heaven. You're not staying up there on a high, high mountain. Because that's not where you were, that's not where you came from. You didn't, you weren't born in the actual heaven, heavenly world. You were born as in the heavenly spirit. The spirit comes down to earth. So because earth is where, is the home of where everybody lives, then the Jesus would be going back to earth. But it's going to look like that. And then Satan's going to be like, well, go ahead. You can have it. Go ahead. Because we just destroyed it. And you're going back. But beforehand, you can rule the world as it looks like this. I haven't even really looked at the map itself. I'm sure there's plenty. Like an alligator. The arm out there and the mouth. Right here in the eye. In the... So as he's tempted, he he says no thanks because he's not bowing down, and the like the world isn't that important to have because the ones that are down there. Well, here's what the rumor is. They're vicious murder serial killers, and they still will be. And this is this whole world is once this war is over and you're going to be thrown back down into it, then it's the Antichrist system for the next three and a half years. Uh, you know, but where does that verse come in that the sake of the elect those days will be shortened? So the ones that are already down here, I mean, you better hope that they they repented and that for the sake of the elect, those days are going to be shortened and they are going to be shortened or else there would be no flesh left. And the flesh that's in mind here is, is the way, the reason why the host body system exists. Because there would be no, no more of this. And because it's mankind. Is that another sheep with its tongue sticking out? I think it is. The eye here, the eye here. And the tongue sticking out there, the nose. Yeah, it is, ain't it? Definitely, it's a tongue. So down here, you're going, like this is where you're going back to. Egypt but the Pharaoh at the time of the when the Sun is darkened and the moon doesn't give its light and I believe that's right after the, the tribulation in those days it sounds like you're not going to hear from the Christ spirit you're not going to hear from Lucifer either Representing the moon and the sun. Sun of God and the moon. And then you go down here. But once you're up here, what's really happening down on earth is everything's getting rearranged for the shift change that's taking place. And it starts with New Jerusalem, because you see heaven coming down to the earth. The Spirit remained on him because it stayed. It stayed consistently. So you'll see, you'll see what the Spirit of heaven is when it, when it, de when it descends. It descends and it stays. 
and that's what that's the only thing that can save the the leaders from warring with themselves you would have to be really good at talking people into not listening to their first thought that always pops in their head first thoughts if you don't train it you have no idea first thoughts are always fear worry doubt anxious for nothing day after day after day when nothing happens but you're anxious for the next day and you're anxious and you're wasting your time feeling anxious and you, you can't even live your life because you're you're constantly thinking and worrying and being afraid of stuff when this is a time where this is a time where Pharaoh lets Moses people go Moses and Aaron they go and they they show all types of plagues happen to Egypt to the Pharaoh but the, but also at the same time Joseph was second charge to the Pharaoh now I think that already took place where we're at now according to the script like it took place and then it takes place spiritually already like it's already it's already taken place right now even though all these stories it's like well, what happened to Joseph well that was a similar story to Christ but but Joseph he got he just they, they threw him into a pit his brothers betrayed him because they were all playing games because they had their Jesus and basically it's like you have a bunch of false prophets that are just you know reading scripts and stuff and so they they played him and they 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 sold him off but then he became second in charge as if like the spirit itself became second in charge and command but it was inside of the, the pharaoh's head it was inside of his brain was, because why why else did he finally let him go well he killed all of his firstborn so every everybody that everybody that had a job to do they they died out because what what their job was to do they didn't do so they it's like being again killed slain murdered and then Christ was brutally beaten to to death on the cross and nailed and all kinds of stuff but Daniel it was like the same kind of spirit Daniel was prophesying about things to come and some people will say there's two of them because it's like having something so accurate is unheard of so it must have been written after the fact but it wasn't so Daniel had the same type of spirit of Christ prophesying telling you what's gonna happen before it happens but what happened to Daniel Daniel was thrown into a lion's den he shut the lion's mouth because it was it became 100% no lion. You just had to find a place where you can see that 100% has turned in the opposite direction and you got victory over it. And when you when you see the when you see that then you know you've changed in your spirit. Her eyes right here, and it's a he goat. I think maybe it might be a horn there. Eye right here, the nose, the eye, the hair, like a woman, hair like a woman. And then, but the billy, it, the billy goat over here, like that. But it's also a serpent behind the other serpent with the tongue coming out, the split tongue striking. And then that being a serpent as well. So there's two of them Lloyd Hall.
Miley Cyrus's bear trap in this direction. So again, it's just all down here in the wastelands. The wastelands, I forget what it says about the wastelands. I, I guess they're going to be wasted. Oh, happy face. At least there's something happy down there. But even the name Kill is right next to it. Eight. Lucifer. Eight pointed star. Eight. In this direction. Eight street names that pop up right in, in these cross sections. Anna, one, Spring, Garden, two, Martin Luther King, three, Eakins, four, Benjamin Franklin Parkway, five, Art Museum, six, Spring Garden Tunnels, McKelly Drive, seven, did I say seven, or, or was that eight? Oh, Martin Luther King, eight. So eight streets, eight street names. Not even counting Pennsylvania Ave right there, but this just this all connection right here. This entire setup matches the eight zigzag that it has. We're drawing pictures of you with dead sheep and serpents eating you. Do you understand that is a horror movie? Do you understand you're being stalked? You are being stalked. Stalk by a serial killer through the mm -hmm. host body system. And the thing that's so horrifying about it is how covert he is. And you know what's really even more? Well, covert is covering. What I see is, uh, it's like obvious as all hell everywhere horrifying is the people that don't know it and they die all of a sudden they end up in an eternal prison that never ends eternal prison that never ends let me help you understand this one too and it's horror and it never ends and the lake of fire is resurrected and thrown into i mean the hell is resurrected and thrown into the lake of fire so hell which is a place where people dwell in their mind is resurrected hell is resurrected it's been given life and it's thrown into the lake of fire because the fire is what consumes you it's the fire that proceeds out of the mouth that devours your enemies your enemy is yourself inside of your own brain which therefore you're living in hell instead of living in the heavenly realm which is within the kingdom within it's it's not literally within but it's within the spirit it's not up there in heaven but there is a literal heaven. It's in the spirit. So the so you live, it's like having a wounded head and living. You're living in hell, you're getting resurrected, and you're getting thrown into the lake of fire. Like you didn't even see it coming. It's just you you start your thing and and then you just get burnt. You get burnt. It's a it's not a burnt sacrifice where God desires sacrifice, he desires mercy. It's when you get burnt, when you when the sweet savior that God loves to smell is a burnt offering. When you can burn somebody with the words that proceed out of your mouth and it devours your enemy and it throws them into a consuming lake of fire because a lake is something that just keeps does it flow through? Some lakes may be still. Well, a lake of fire just looks like it's something that just continuously goes like a like a volcano or something erupting that's why we're seeing the lakes of fire happening now because they're at the end and but truly it's just like the beast and the false prophet where were they thrown into the lake of fire well then that would mean that they got burned up forever and ever because they're going to burn with that word of god out of their mouth forever and ever the beast and the false prophet i think it's a Words of the dragon. 
I don't really know my scripture too much. I just know that when things are looked at in a literal sense, it can instill fear into people's brains and their hearts. But when you know the truth and you're not afraid of death, then you're just going to keep living your life the way that you can and endure to the end. That's horrifying. Right? Yeah, I know. And that's the punishment for going against the Lord God. However... Just like with Christ being crucified. Can you imagine if, like back then, like they wrote it the right way and they told you and they interpreted it correctly? Not in a fear sense way whatsoever, but in a legit actual way. And then he's still living after the cross from rising up from the dead among the people that are dead in hell. He rises up. And he does live too, because he could also be considered a beast with a wounded head, because he did live. He is a beast, a lamb. He did rise up from the sea of humanity. But if you want to take it the negative way, you can look at it that way too. It'll be played out regardless. So, as he's still communicating with them, and but he's still alive, and then you're supposed to get killed just like Christ did because they all die. But they know the truth of it that you don't actually die. But they will come after you and gang stalk you and harass you. If you're not used to it, it can be tough. But if you have someone that goes through it, like I pretty, I'm pretty sure they followed them everywhere they went. They, they said literally, all right, fine, we'll follow you. We're going to follow you. We're going to surveil you. We're going to do what you told us to do. And they do that. And then his disciples see, his apostles see that he's still alive. Because in the Acts, the Acts for 42 months, where people are acting in Acts, they're acting it out. It seems like they're talking to Christ still, but they're, they're talking to him as if in spirit, like praying type of thing, like talking. But what if he was still there and he didn't actually even die? And they know that. And then, but the ones still have to push fear in others because they don't know the truth yet. When you know the truth that we're at the end and nothing matters because the government's going to rest on your shoulders. You have the Christ spirit, it's going to rest on your shoulders. Even the ones at the highest positions that have Christ in their spirit, they're still not directly saying it but you can tell that they do and then you can also tell that others are struggling with it still he made a way out of it the lord god the self-existent eternal jehovah jesus he made and is there a is there a lord god a human being on earth and in, in on the youtube platform that is someone from heaven like christ like christo christos was wasn't he in the moon? So he was up there. And then Truman, when he stepped out of the world, that's kind of like Christ saying, no thanks. And then angels ministered to him. But in the Truman show, Truman didn't die. He, I don't know, did he ever, did anybody ever even touch him? But it's, a, it's the same type of a story with Christ. Everything ties in together. So you have different characters that are, that are playing Christ, but something different happens to them in the Bible. But when it's Jesus, oh my goodness, they beat the piss out of him and torture them to death all the way through. And you don't want to be like that because that's going to happen to you. But when you are like that and it doesn't happen to you and you don't listen to the fear and then you set an example for others, then they know that, oh, that's what that means? Oh, yeah. So that, yeah, it makes sense because we're watching it right now. It's actually happening. So that, check, that's true. Oh, that's not literal either. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe I did that. I didn't even have to. Oh, crap. And then that's how that happens. But when you know the truth, it sets you free. You just wait until the end. You know? Made a way out for you on the cross.
So you either admit your guilt and you raise your hand and you say, I'm guilty. I'm totally guilty. I've done. Um, because the Lord God can be in heaven. It's an actual human being because there, there is a literal place that's heaven. There is a literal Nazareth. There is a little Beth, Beth, literal Bethlehem. There's literal Jesus from Nazareth up there. There's literal Lord God from heaven up there because he runs just like the angel of the bottomless pit is down here. You would have the Lord. Let's say you have the you have the God of heaven, literal. You have the God of earth, like your landlord, landlord, the God of earth. Then you have a Lord of command, the one that commands the. You know what happens, and then you have the God of heaven and earth. The God of heaven and earth is the spirit. It's the same spirit that. Before I hopped on YouTube, that spirit that I've always known was a spirit that runs the heavenly realm, in the spiritual realm, and what happens while you're walking on earth is that's how you find that spirit, by living here on earth. Living in this hellhole prison cell you tend to find Jesus, you know, when you get locked up. So I literally did get locked up a year and a half. I, I literally did turn to Christ, Jesus Christ, in prison. And I even prayed with a curse word. I remember calling myself an effing loser. I'm praying to God, which is a spirit. And I didn't even end it in Jesus' name. Did I even? No, I think I did. Yeah, I did. And I did it a second time when I moved to another prison because it was tough. It was The move was tough. So that's the spirit in heaven who is the God of heaven and earth. Because the God of heaven and earth is the spirit coming that wasn't before. Because that spirit means it dominates heaven, the heavenly realm inside of your spirit, and it dominates what happens on earth. So you would have to have peace on earth, but you can only have peace on earth if you, if you have peace in heaven in your spirit. And even up in literal heaven, having peace up there too, and then peace down here on earth. Peace in heaven, peace on earth, with the literal people that run the planet, that spirit dominates the earth and the heaven. So whatever testing period happens from here on out, just be aware that time has an end. Harold Campen warned us about this 10 years ago. We're at the end, the tail end. Some people backslide. So what? You backslide, just strap on your boots and keep moving forgive yourself too stop beating yourself up for things that you were told were sins and and things that may be sins but you have your nature to you and who's going to tell you what to do with yourself who's going to do that well the god of heaven recommends things, gives advice, that kind of thing, doesn't force you to do anything. It's up to you if you get convicted or not of whatever it is that you're doing or you're not doing. The problem is people have been told what they can and cannot do with themselves because they're being ran by Satan. That's what happens when you make deals. So here, here's my deal. I'm going to make a deal. I'm going to be the first Hollywood actor that never bowed down to Satan. Turned it all down. Later on down in life, if you want to put me in a movie somewhere, play a role, whatever, whatever. I, it, apparently... 
the direction where things are going in this world, because this movie's almost over, is that if you're already in a live movie, and you never signed a contract, you never bowed down to Satan, you never bow down to Satan, and you wind up waking up into a movie, well, then it's only fair that in the end, you become a Hollywood star, and you you do that by telling the truth, never bowing down to Satan, standing your ground for the God that you believe in, and then proving that the God that you believed in actually came through. And then that's how you know God exists, because it's a spiritual thing that happens. There's no evidence. There's no proof. There's no nothing. There's no, you don't even know anybody. And all of a sudden, things just keep happening and happening and happening. And there's no stopping it. And then you're able to retire and live the rest of your life peacefully. All because you told the truth, endured to the end, and hung in there. And you didn't alter anything. And you didn't allow people to tell you what to do or not to do with your own body. Sometimes, you know, you can take advice from people and that also helped. And, and you know, it's not just yourself. That's what I'm saying. You can make it, but you got to give help. I mean, you got to give props to your, your friends that helped you. They help you see things. Even the ones that turned against you. Because they're the ones that you actually learn from a lot. When people turn against you, you learn a lot from them, especially when they come back in a direction with just a different mindset. They might not like you still, but there's some type of respect because you've taken a beating, the same beating that Clint keeps talking about. You're just going to get it, Robin. I've already gotten it. It's already, you already did it. But I understand there's a literal manifestation in certain people's brains that they want to fulfill. But if it's not your say, and it's the say, let's say it's somebody else's say, like, let's say the dragon is the one that gave its power to its other sibling. Let's just say the dragon says, nah, nah, we're not doing that. Nah, uh, I'm the boss. We're not doing that. Well, you may want to do it. You may want to. Just punch somebody so hard and knock them out. But you're getting orders from the dragon. But I thought the dragon was wroth with the uh, with the seed, the remnant. Yeah, the remnant, the the saints, the the ones that. It's like the dragon is wroth with the remnant of the seed. But at what point before they became born again? Or after they became born again. Now here's that 12 o'clock thing. Oops. Seventeen sixteen. Godliness, it's happening. So... And right now, over this whole major mandate thing they have moving going on, and you know, I just can't say the words here. You mean the date that you are having with a man, a man date? All these women are dating men, or dating a man, and it's like a, it's not a men date, it's a man date. Man as in one. It's literally causing people to deliver their loved ones up to death. Like to die in Christ. They're delivering their loved ones up. They're making their loved ones die to themselves because they have information they can easily just show you. Like, hey, look. What? Yeah, look. Oh my goodness. And then they get delivered up to death and they get killed. The fathers come up against the sons, the sons against the daughter. I mean, uh, you know, so on and so forth. You are seeing 2 Timothy play out right before your eyes. You're seeing uh, Matthew 10. Right now, Timothy and Matthew. So the 1 Timothy and then the 2 Timothy. 
And Matthew 10 doesn't only just speak of the shining ones being in, in the sons of man, for they will deliver you up to the councils, they will scourge you in their synagogues, but he goes on to say, and you shall be brought before the governors and kings for my sake. Yeah, what will happen is you're going to get you're going to get scorned. You're going to have some false prophets get up and say your name and and talk trash about you publicly, and because you're going to be you're going to be hated among all nations, and and you're going to get killed, and they're going to they're going to really. You know, they're going to, ah, you're just going to get beaten to poles. And you don't want to die the way Christ did, because you're going to die the same way. For a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought for what you shall speak, for it shall be given to you in that same, in that same hour what you shall speak. Yeah, don't even worry about what you got to say. Just, just talk. Just say it. Just speak it. For it is not you that speak, but the Holy Spirit of your Father which speaks in you. Here it is. So the Father, which is the Spirit, speaks in you. It's if you just open up your sepulcher and let the Father speak from the Spirit, then it it it'll do that, and you don't you don't uh, have to worry about what you're going to say. If it's the truth, it's the truth. What what does it matter? All right. And the brother shall deliver up brother to death. The father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents. And That's good looking out, brother. You're going you're gonna to kill your brother like that. Get, kill him in Christ. Give him that information. Let him turn and see what it is that's happening. And put him to death. Cause, cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Unbelievable. Now, let's take. Let's take verse 17 and 18. Now, I'm, I'm saying these things because what I discovered in Matthew 10 in the Hebrew version, Shem Tov's Matthew right here is going to take you completely right, right off the charts. Now, granted, just verse 17 is worded, and 17 and 18 is worded a little different. There you go. I'll read to you the way they translate it in English. Indeed. Although the translation is incorrect, I will tell you what they translate it as. Beware of men. Now, they say they will not deliver you up in their, in their congregation in the houses of assembly, Mm -hmm. but to governors and kings. And you will bear witness on my behalf to them and to the Gentiles. So are you saying you'll bear witness here and take that to other lands? Is that what I'm hearing? But to governors and kings you up in their, in their congregation in the houses of assembly, but correct, I will tell you what they translate it as. Beware of men. men. Now they say they will not deliver you. Oh, uh, okay. Also, beware of men because men, men, yeah, men that go down here, beware of of men. But the women, see, the women got Eve got tricked. Adam didn't. Eve fell for it. Eve. Eve. And that's what happened with Eve. And Adam, to beware of men and you up in their sin in their congregation in the houses of assembly, but to governors and kings. And you will bear witness on my behalf to them and to the Gentiles. So as you look at it in that way, you will bear witness. And then you look at it, I will bear witness with them on behalf. Now, that's a minor issue, in my opinion, there. Because we read in Matthew 10, 17, Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake for a test. 
Oh, Steve, I can give you an example. When Tyler Mullen came after you and was talking about you, that was like scourging you in their synagogues, in their, in their YouTube house. You were being scourged. And they will deliver you up. Testimony against them and the Gentiles. The difference in this would be here is that the Hebrew Matthew makes it appear that they're not they're going to kind of bypass the synagogue, which would have been the way of of um, judgment in the first place. They're just going to bypass that. They're going to take you straight to court right down to the judge. And who's the judge? Who's the judge? Well, I know the judge. And I have favor in the, in the eyes of the judge. But when they deliver you up, take no thought for what you shall speak, for it shall be given to you in that same hour that you shall speak. They have on here in English, beware of men. But over here in, in the Hebrew part, and I'm going to highlight it. I don't know how well you guys will see that as far as highlighting it. It says, Hazaharu bivene adom. Now, most of you, I'm sure, don't speak Hebrew. So I will translate for you what it actually says. The first word comes, literally, the root is Zohar. Zohar. Um, Anybody uh, have any idea what the word Zohar means? Zohar is what the Jewish people have. I have a whole, the whole collection of the Zohar, 23, 24 volumes of it. Twenty three, twenty four volumes of it, and then maybe you'll get where I'm going at into houses. Well, YouTube houses, and all right, and and lead. Well, let me explain it first. You can explain it first. All right. Make that one purple. Make that one that kind of color. Uh, the silly women, which are not really silly. They're just little women. Now, here's where we're at. For this sort, that, that's your masculine plural. Some type of masculine entities there. They creep. All right. When they creep, that's the word right here in uh, in Duno. It's literally to put on a garment. Is what that word is there. So men crept in unawares. They put in a garment. They put on a garment, and the garment is the woman. Now, the garment. But you do know what the garment is. You're putting on a garment. The bear trap. So they crept in unawares in the houses. They crept in unaware in that first part. And do know. And, uh, and you won't be able to see this, but I've got it pulled up over here. Um, yes, and do know that's the, that that word being that they creep. They 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 they're putting on a garment. All right, they creep into houses. That can literally be your body. So this sort, this masculine entities. They actually, according to what it is saying here in the Greek language, these entities or these things, these masculine things here, they, in Duno, they're putting on a garment, and that garment is, is a house or a body, a dwelling place. They put that on. They creep in there, basically. They creep into these bodies, and then they come in there, and they're going after these little women. And they're taking them captive. 
abductions. If you ever knew what happened. Now, if they take if they take the women captive, and then they put on their body suit, they and their men, and they crept in unaware, and they're posing as, you know, your wife or something, and then they creep in unaware, and then they trick you into having sex with them. But how could you tell? That would be such a trick. Before the flood. But then flip side, the, the women could be, even, even the, it, what it is, the women are sewed with tears and they become men. And then they are the husbands of the of the other race they they look like their husbands but they were really women from the beginning these fallen angels appeared as if they were the women's husbands they appear as if they were the women's husbands so the women the ones that look like women are really the men is what Steve is saying here. They basically crept in and put on a body that looked like their husbands. Now, I wanted to bring that out mainly because of one. So they could either have put on a suit like that, or they do it an actual surgery and grow hair and, and male components. Matthew 10 in the Hebrew doesn't say, it doesn't say beware of men. Oh, that's a good point. Beware of them because there's some pretty doggone bad men out there. But it literally says, Zohar, ha ha zoharu bevene adam. And also, don't tell, don't tell men. Like when Christ was talking about, don't tell men, don't tell men this, don't say nothing to man or something like that. I mean, he didn't say, don't say it to women. The shining ones in men. You got to go tell the women. They're the ones that are going to deliver you up to be afflicted in the court system. And then we find out that at that same time when all this is happening. Is this not a long drawn out trial between Christ and Satan? It's a long drawn out trial. You, you, he was delivered up to the courts. This is the courts. There are 12 jurors. There's a judge that slams down the mallet. And the final verdict, there's no plea bargain because Christ doesn't bow down. So Christ takes it all the way to the very end to get the jurors to, to, to choose. You can only prove your innocence and their guiltness by circumstantial evidence alone. That's why it is the greatest trial in history. This is where we find out brother will deliver you up to brother to death and father his son. The sons will rise up against their fathers. And likewise, your son rising up against you, your, or the, the fathers, or your brother, putting your brother to death scorning you scourging you trying to trying to kill your your career your 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 word your what you're saying to be true they try to pile a bunch of dung on it and lead them unto death they're leading them even in the hebrew they lead them into death well Tomorrow. To know, be aware of, or behold. Okay, ready? Tomorrow, I'll go over these. I didn't get to these timestamps yet. And then, I didn't get to this yet, where... Because I gotta go to bed, it's... 
11 11 11 12 october 27 2021 because i got work tomorrow and then friday and i thoroughly enjoy being able to do this but gotta pay the bills if i don't want to be homeless you know if if i'm not forced to be homeless anyway but tomorrow i want to get into some of the things that derek was talking about i got a story about derek derek bros i got a story about him but wait do you hear this story yep i got some i got some information to tell you him and malia both of them wait do you see <laughs> 